It was statistician and quality control pioneer George Box who said, all models are wrong, some models are useful. In this lesson, we're gonna recognize the transitive property of dependence as it is used as a business model. And we're gonna use multiple sources of information, functions, and methodologies to model a business. All to answer the question, how can you mathematically model a startup business? Before we get into it, let's make sure we're ready for this lesson by taking a look at warm up number two. Use graph paper and a straight edge. Find the point at which the graphs, the following equations intersect. And here we have a perfectly made scientific graph. Let's start with this parabola. X squared plus four means it is a parabola that goes through the Y axis at four. Now it's going to move up at mirrored rates on both the left and right side. Graphing the equation, y is equal to x plus two means it goes through the y-axis at two. It has a positive slope of one, and we wind up with that line, though these two do not intersect. Now, let's take a look at a problem you will be able to do by the end of this lesson. Let's check our understanding. Determine the expense E for the production of an item when the price P is given $42. Given the E and Q equation. So I think it would be easier in this case to say that Q is 80 times 42 plus 100,000. This means that Q is 103,360. We now need to put this Q value into the E equation so that E is 50 times 103,360 plus. 80,000. This will give us an expense of 5,248,000. Statistics are necessary in making business decisions. The relationship between supply and demand, expense, revenue, and profit, and break-even points must be analyzed. All the factors may be modeled together to assess business situation. Dependence is used in many contexts. In sports, baseball fans depend on the manager of the team to lead the team to victory. In turn, the manager of the team depends on the players to work hard to succeed. In politics, voters depend on their local elected officials to represent them. Local elected officials depend on the state government officials to give them the support they need to represent the voters. In a business venture, expenses depend on the quantity of the product demanded by the market, and the market demand depends on the price of the product. These are a few examples of dependency in daily life. In the first example, if a fan depends on the manager and the manager depends on the players, the fans depend on the players as well. In the second example, if the voters depend on the local elected officials and the local elected officials depend on the state officials, the voters depend on the state officials too. Finally, in the last example, if expenses depend on quantity and quantity depends on price, expenses also depend on price. These are examples of transitive property dependence. If X depends on Y and Y depends on Z, it follows that X depends on Z. The determination of the price that yields the maximum profit depends on a number of factors that precede it. Mathematical models using algebra is an illustration of the use of the transitive property in business. Mathematically modeling business situations helps you better understand relationships between and among variables. In the following example, E represents expense, P represents price, and Q represents quantity demanded. Determine the expense for production of an item when the price is $60, given the E equation and the Q equation. Now, E depends on Q and Q depends on P. To find the value of E at a particular price P, use substitution or express the expense function directly in terms of price. Both methods illustrate the transitive property of dependence. Now, the first method is to use the price to find the value Q that can be substituted into the equation E. This is to say what happens to our Q equation when P is 60. We get Q is 80 times 60 plus 100,000. 
This gives us that Q is 104,800. Knowing that Q is 104,800, we use our E equation, substituting that value in so that 50 times 104,800 plus 80,000. This gives us that E is 5,320,000. Now the second method of substitution, the value of Q in terms of P into the expense function and then uses the price given to find E. Meaning E being 50Q plus 80,000 and Q being 80P plus 100,000 we substitute Q into P, giving us E is 50 times 80P plus 100,000 plus 80,000. This allows us to distribute and combine like terms, giving us E is 4,000P plus 5,080,000. Now we would substitute 60 in for P, giving us E is 4,000 times 60 plus 5,080,000, or that E is 5,320,000. So the total expense is 5,320,000. Let's check our understanding. Determine the expense E for the production of an item when the price P is given $42. Given the E and Q equation. So I think it would be easier in this case to say that Q is 80 times 42 plus 100,000. This means that Q is 103,360. We now need to put this Q value into the E equation so that E is 50 times 103,360 plus. 80,000. This will give us an expense of 5,248,000. Let's extend our understanding. Suppose we have this A equation and this Y equation. Describe how the value of A depends on the value of Z. Once the value of Z is known, then Y can be calculated. With Y calculated, then X can be determined. Once X is determined, it is substituted into the first equation. We can also do a whole bunch of substitution so that A is equal to 20 times X. And now X is 30Y plus 40. And then we have a plus 30. So we're going to get A in terms of X. This means that A is 600X plus 800 plus 30, giving us... 600x plus 830. Now we're going to substitute those values of y in for y in the a equation so that a is 600 times 40z plus 500 plus 50 plus 830. This means that a is 24,000z plus 30,830. A business model uses summary analysis of the situation in terms of the dependent variable. Examine the three graphs of a business situation for the production of widgets. The graphs depict numerical information that is needed to complete the summary analysis. Write the summary analysis in the terms of the data presented in the graphs. The summary analysis should have the following format. In summary, to start this business, blank widgets should be manufactured. Each should be sold for blank dollars. The break-even point is reached at a price of blank dollars or blank dollars, but the profit is made at any price between those prices. At the selling point illustrated in the first graph, the revenue of blank dollars and expense of blank dollars results in a net profit of blank dollars. In summary, to start this business, 103,200 widgets should be manufactured. Each should be sold for $40. The break-even point is reached at a price of $14.83 or $65.17, but a profit is made at any price between those prices. 
At the selling price illustrated in the first graph, there is a revenue of $800,000 and an expense of $420,000, resulting in a profit of $380,000. Let's check our understanding. Use the points labeled on the graph to show that the maximum profit at the maximum selling prices is the difference between the revenue and expense value at that price. Now the maximum point of profit of that function is 40 comma 380,000. The expense at the price of $40 is $420,000, and the revenue at a price of $40 is $800,000. So $800,000 minus $420,000, that's going to be equal to $380,000.